Well, hello there. My name is Jordan Cameron, and you're currently watching Make Your Pick. Now, this is our very first episode. Um, in case you're wondering what the show's about, essentially, you send me pictures, I talk about them. It's pretty straightforward. So, the theme of our first episode is color. Now, you guys had quite a few of your colored pictures to send in. Most pictures taken nowadays are taken in color, after all. Um, but our theme is focusing in on your use of color. With no other particular rubric, we're just going to talk about the way that a, each picture that's been submitted makes use of color. So to start with, we're going to take a look at my own picture. Now this is a picture of my friend, James, uh, right outside a local pizza place. You'll notice that he's lit up by a neon sign. Although there is an extra light above him to the left, uh, give them a little extra illumination to the scene. So this picture, we didn't really plan this one out. Um, I was just like, hey, James, go stand by that neon sign. I am trying to get more experience shooting with neon in general, because um, it looks really cool, right? Even when neon lights are warm, like the red in the pizza, they still have this distinctness to them. They look very bold. Um, there's a certain harshness to neon lights that I appreciate. And yet, when neon lights hit skin, it usually tends to be a sort of softer looking light on the skin. It's a weird uh, mix of things. It almost feels a little bit contradictory, neon lights. Um, but yeah, I like the effect here. It's a pretty cool picture. If I had to criticize my own image, I would say maybe the subject, we could have a little more light on his face. But considering this was a spur-of-the-moment picture, I'm pretty happy with it. So our next image comes from viewer Christine Nora. Christine, thank you very much for submitting this picture. Um, it's titled Morning Moonset. It's 15 degrees in uh, the quiet corner of Connecticut, apparently. Um, I like this one. You can, uh, you can see the frost on the glass here. Uh, regarding the color in the picture specifically, it's got a very cool uh, tone to it overall. Now, in case you're new to colors and the way that were described, all you've got to know here is that colors are split into warm and cool and sometimes neutral. Um, so the cool colors, you know, the blues, generally speaking, you see a lot of those here. And cool colors are usually used to convey a sense of coldness. Um, and here you definitely get that. There's also a nice use of negative space, that is to say, at the top left of the image, uh, there's just this darkness to it. It kind of focuses you in on the areas of the image that have the color and the light. Overall, I like this picture, so thank you again, Christina, very much for submitting. Our next picture comes from Black Sheep Photos. This is an interesting one. It, uh, it's titled hashtag window, hashtag reflection, hashtag EHC, but focusing on the picture. Um, there's a lot of red in here, for sure. There's an interesting contrast, though, between the red and the reflections on the glass of a window. Um, there's quite a bit of green here. It's a nice contrast, I have to say. There's also some white streaks in the window, that being the, um, that being the framing of the window itself. Overall, it's a pretty interesting image if I had to give any sort of advice. Uh, even though this one appears to be either digitally zoomed or cropped, I would actually suggest cropping just a little bit further. As you can see on the top right of the image, uh, this barn or building, wherever it is, is in the woods. You can see the trees and the edge of the sky, but it's just enough to be distracting. So by cropping, it would give the image a little extra sense of focus. Overall though, I appreciate this one. Thank you again, Black Sheep Photos. So now we have a really interesting one here from Madison.photo. This picture is bleak in a sort of way. It feels cold. Uh, that's largely due to the gray tones in the sky, um, and of course that harsh gray building standing right there in the middle of everything. However, this bleakness is nicely contrasted by the uh, deep greens of the grass and the little yellow flowers dotting the field. The title of the image from Madison is Malinhead. Uh, this one seems to have been taken somewhere in Ireland, and I appreciate that she hashtagged it Star Wars, because it does look an awful lot like a certain location in The Last Jedi. Overall, it makes nice use of color, and it's a picture that uh, you might not have been thinking about taking, if this makes sense. Uh, this isn't directed to Madison, this is just in general. But a lot of the time, when we think about taking bright, colorful images, 
or nice pictures of landscapes, we think ideal conditions, right? Uh, we think, you know, sun's out, blue skies, or we think very dramatic clouds. But this, it's overall very soft, and yet because of its mixture of the hard and soft elements, the soft sky coupled with the hard building, uh, coupled with the welcoming and lively, maybe not lively, life-filled, life-inspiring, I don't know. But look at the grass, look at the, look at the plants, the flora. Overall, it's a very nicely done image. It's an image made out of contrasts, and I appreciate that a ton. So our next picture here comes from Instagram user Images in My Head. Um, it appears to be cherry blossoms in the springtime. Uh, maybe a botanist can straighten me out on this one. Um, I like this one. The composition from below is quite nice, and a lot of the times when it comes to taking pictures of flowers and trees, it's the only composition you can get. But overall, though, it's got a nice balance to it. Um, there's a nice contrast between the very, very delicate pink of the flowers um, against the green of a tree, against the bright blue of the sky. And then also, I like that your light source, the sun, is directly behind the flowers, because uh, it gives them this almost translucent quality. Like, you can't quite see past them, um, but you can see the shadows of the branches through the flowers. It's a little thing, but I like it. So our next picture also comes courtesy of Instagram user images in my head. Now, this one is a butterfly standing on what appears to be a road somewhere, or perhaps concrete. Um, this is an interesting one. I, I think this is a painted lady butterfly. I'm going to feel real dumb later on when I'm looking at butterflies, and I'm like, nope, that was actually a... Regarding this picture, I like the bright orange streak in the butterfly's wing um, compared to everything else. We've got the background, which is the top half, uh, just this darkness with some, I'm guessing, foliage in the background. Um, and of course, the lower half of the image is just this really bright, almost overexposed uh, texture, asphalt, concrete, cement, not 100% sure, but I like it. Again, like that uh, previous image, courtesy of, let's see here, yeah, Madison.photo of Malinhead. This one is also made of sharp contrasts. Images in my head, I, whoever you are, you have nice subject separation. That's what I'm trying to say in so many words. Um, the butterfly stands out, and that's important. Overall, there's a very nice use of color here. If I have any critiques for this image, it would be to crop in a bit, because right now, as we see it, there's a whole lot of its background in here. Um, that said, if you were preparing this image for layout in a magazine, all that negative space could actually come in handy. So it's nice to have the extra leverage. That said, for the, if you're just presenting this image as is, cropping in definitely doesn't hurt at all. Our next picture is a portrait from Sophia Pouncy. I like this one a lot. Uh, remember how I wanted to do the neon lights right? I feel like Sophia really nailed it in this case. I'm not sure what lights she's using in this case. In this case, it almost feels like the lights are painted across your subject's face. Uh, like the, let's see here, that would be the right side of her face, but camera left. Camera left side of her face in shadow. Then towards the middle, you've painted out this just tri nice triangle of red light. Then of course, you've got the green light across her hair and the back of her hand. Overall, this looks really cool. Uh, the contrasting colors of lights uh, gives this image some life. It gives it some visual interest, but at the same time, it's not distracting. Uh, her expression here is also very interesting. Then too, if you look at the lower quadrants of the image, uh, you've got the yellow of her sweater, the blue of her jacket. It's a very cool picture overall. Nice job, Sophia. Our next picture comes from Instagram user Emma's Artspan. Now, this appears to be a football field. The caption says, there's always light when darkness is on its way. Because it's a football field, but it's lit up by one of those really big, really tall lights that they have in football fields that I don't actually know the name of. I should be ashamed for that. So this picture was taken at sunset. Um, I really like the way that the that tall light on a post. <laughs> Basically, I like the way that it stands out so sharply against everything else. Like, the sky, you've got that cotton candy sky thing going on at sunset, um, then you have the very dark area of trees beneath it. If I had any criticisms for this image, um, it would be that maybe the lights are just a little bit too bright. Like, in this case, they appear to be blown out. Uh, that is to say, there's n comparatively little detail in the lights themselves. 
So if you were to shoot at a higher shutter speed, or if you were to make your aperture just a bit tighter, um, you would have gotten more detail in the lights. That said, you might have also lost more detail in the sky if you did that. So, Asi Asi could go 50-50 either way. Either way, I like the way that it looks. Uh, the nice contrast of colors between sky and ground, it's very good. Okay, so our next couple images, we have a whole series uh, from Instagram user Stills that speak. And I really, really like all three of these. Okay, so this first one is a long exposure. It appears to be looking down on a highway or roadway of some sort in the middle of the night, and you just see all these taillights of cars. If you're wondering how this sort of image is made, basically you take your camera and you set it to keep the shutter open for a while. Uh, generally a few seconds depending on how much light you want to let in. And what happens is that you get the trails of light exposed for uh, while the camera shutter is open. A lot of people use this technique um, for street shooting at night. It looks really cool and I have to say the contrast between the reds of the car lights and the overall green hue of the image that looks really good. It makes them stand out quite well. So thank you for this image, Stills That Speak. Our next one. Uh, this one is simply titled The Vibe. It's another night shot. I like this one too. It, it's very moody. Um, this one seems to be more about light than color. In fact, I think this image could actually work well in black and white. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of color to focus on here. Um, although there is a little bit of contrast between uh, the right side of the image, where the light seems sort of greenish, and the left, where the light seems more blue. That said, I like this one too. But this brings us to our third one. Um, this one's simply titled Busy Life Betrayals. This one's interesting because if you zoom in here just a bit, you'll notice that there's actually a couple of people, like almost in the middle of the image. Um, these sort of ghostly looking images of the people, again, that's due to the long exposure effect. Like, you notice how there's a bit of blur around them? They were moving, but just a little bit during this long exposure. Now, what I'm curious about is what made this bright red light trail. Um, it, it was probably a vehicle of some sort, but I can't quite tell what the vehicle was. I'm seeing this uh, bright yellow ghost of a something in the right side of the image. Maybe it was a bus. Uh, whatever it was, it looks cool here. So, thank you for these free, still as that speak. So our next picture is sort of heartwarming. It's uh, from Images That Matters, and it's a mom and her kid. It's like not really a traditional port. This almost feels like a, like this feels like a still from a catalog, almost. Like if you were to, like I can just see in my head like little bubbles that say number one, number two, number three, and all the different products in the picture. But no, getting serious here. I like the color palette that Images That Matters used here. Because um, you have the uh, this very warm mat, and of course the warm skin tones on your people. But as you look around the picture, your eye is sort of drawn to a couple blues. There's the blue of the kid's dress. There's the blue of the chair. The way that everything is arranged, it keeps your eyes sort of centered on your two subjects. So this is a good use of similar tones. The warmish and neutrals that you see in the background and on the rug, coupled with warm, coupled with very cold, that is the bright blue of the chair and the dress, to keep you centered on the subjects. So very good use of color, images that matters. Thank you for those. So our next picture here is actually a fourth from Skulls That Speak. Thank you very much for that. Um, this one, again, more cars, long exposure lights at night, this time you can actually see the vehicles a bit more clearly, so I'm guessing that either this was a longer expo- Actually no, it makes sense for this to be a shorter exposure, or there was more light on the cars. Um, either way though, I really like this one. Like the first one, that one is still my favorite of this series. That said, I like this one a whole lot, just because you can see the cars here. So it's a bit more obvious as to what the subject is. That said, the long trails are still a cool abstraction in the picture. Regarding the color of this image, I do feel like the blues uh, are a little distracting. It seems like there are lighted billboards or something up there. Not too fond of that. Um, you could change them in post to green if that doesn't bother you. I think that would improve the image a little bit because you'd get that red-green dynamic going. Um, overall, though, I still like this one, and I feel like those images, uh, the ones of the long exposures at night, 
they're cool on their own, but I feel like they'd be especially strong if they were presented as a series of images. Like I could totally see them on a wall um, in perhaps a doctor's office or just a, any old office, really, or one of those cool modern houses that people happen to live in, in a group. I feel like those pictures are especially strong. So thank you for all those stills that speak. Our next picture comes courtesy of photography with AM. So these appear to be uh, like little lanterns. Again, there's a lot of negative space in this image, right? So if you're laying this out for a magazine and you need some place to put text, that negative space, fantastic for that. That said, the negative space isn't totally empty or black. Because if you look carefully in the left-hand side, you can actually see what appears to be a darkened lantern. It's a little thing, but I like it. Regarding the color of the image, because there's so much negative space, the focus is just on the light and the color here, which I like. Um, so you got that red, that yellow, that green. Again, these are colors that contrast sharply with each other. I like it. It's very bold, but at the same time, a little subdued, if that makes sense. Okay, we have another one from Photography with AM. She says this is the favorite she's ever taken, but this one appears to be of a yellow tang in an aquarium, a uh, Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium. I'm gonna have to check that out one day. I like this one, although I do wish the light was a little better. That said, I understand it can be challenging to take a good picture in a public aquarium. Um, the colors, though, are pretty interesting because it almost looks as though the fish itself is made of neon lights or it's under neon light or something. Like, it's a bright yellow here. And it stands out nicely from the background. Now again, you're working with a live, basically wild animal in a public aquarium, so it's not going to be especially easy to direct it, but I do feel that the shot would be a bit stronger if there were more light on the fish's face itself. Because right now, like, we're see it feels like our focus is being drawn to the fish's body, which is cool enough, but it doesn't hold your attention the way the shot might if the focus was on a fish's face. Overall though, I like it. Now we have oh, a trio of images here. Again, photography from photography with AM at the Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium. This middle picture of flamingo preening is the strongest. So that's one I'll be focusing on. Because in this picture here, you have of course a bright pink bird, very appealing, but you also have its reflection. And its reflection, the colors are the same, but a bit more muted. Um, now, I'm not sure what uh, equipment photography was with AM was using here. I do feel like this shot might have benefited from being shot with a bit of a wider lens, and the reason for that is because you would have captured more of the flamingo's reflection itself. Um, that said, overall though, I like this picture, because if you zoom in on the feathers here, you get to see that there's sort of a gradient. Like, the feathers aren't one solid pink color. There's variation, there's reflection to them, and it gives the image some much needed life. Um, the flamingo stands out nicely against the back background. Overall, I like this picture a lot. So we have another picture from Madison.photo. This one is of a sunset. Um, it's very simple. It's just a big, flat landscape. There are a few lights along the horizon that you might notice. Um, but yeah, overall, not too much happening in the picture. Just a very clean, very simple sunset pic. I like that there's like this sh just strip of red along the horizon. A lot of dark negative space on the bottom. And then this beautifully textured uh, grayish, bluish sky up top. Uh, it's a nice contrast. Um, it draws the eye in all the right ways. If I had any criticism for this picture, it would be that maybe it would work if it were a bit wider. Now, I don't know what you are working with here. I don't know what your equipment was, and I don't know what is on the left or right sides of the image. For all I know, shooting wider might have ruined it. That said, I do feel that if it were a bit wider, it would work because our focus, remember, is on this horizon line. That horizon line is going left to right or right to left, depending on you know how you prefer to read it. But basically, our focus is on the horizontal. So when our focus is on something horizontal, having a longer image, that tends to work a bit better. That said, overall though, I like this picture. Our next picture comes from Marsha Palaska. So we have an album of pictures here, but I'm focusing in on picture number three, because I like the colors here. Because here, we have a bit of contrast, but for the most part, the colors are more complementary. Because uh, you have the yellow of her hair, 
but a different shade of yellow for what appears to be a sweater or pullover. I'm not a women's fashion expert, don't at me. Um, and then we have sort of a neutral tone for what appears to be a fluffy scarf. Then we have warm tones in this tree up here in the top left. Um, and then we have, uh, of course, the contrast with the sky and the grass and such. But overall, there's a nice balance of pic uh, colors in this picture. This picture differs from the ones that we've looked at today because, uh, unlike the others, this one is a selfie. And people tend to dismiss selfies as not being important photography. I tend to disagree with that. Self-portraiture, of course, is a thing. But now that everybody does it, and everybody has a cell phone in their hand for taking selfies, uh, people are like, oh, that's not important. They, they don't even think of it as low art. They think of it as being less than art. But honestly, I disagree. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary thing. It involves paying attention to the lighting, colors. Um, it involves modeling of oneself. It involves having a little bit of familiarity with your equipment uh, so you can get the shot right. So overall, I like this picture, Marsha. Keep taking selfies. So now, there was a deadline for submitting pictures to this first episode. It was the last day of November 2019. Now, the very first picture submitted for the episode was my own. I had to get it started somehow. Um, and I did talk about how I wanted to get better at taking pictures with neon lighting, right? Well, as it turns out, I did get an opportunity to get better. Um, I had a photo shoot with a friend of mine, Venus, at Dia Beacon. Now, it's this great museum in Beacon, New York. I recommend it a lot if you haven't been. Um, there's a lot of modern art there, and it's very photography friendly, so long as you are not doing a commercial shoot, which mine was not, it was just for fun. Uh, you're welcome to take pictures there, just don't hog the exhibits. So, I'm at Dia Beacon, and there's this beautiful wall uh, made of lights. It's like covered in what I suspect are uh, like fl these fluorescent tubes. It looks sort of neon. It's a cool look overall. Uh, so I took this picture. Now, because I had finished processing the picture a bit too late for the deadline of my own show, I didn't submit it, but I'm sharing it anyway, just to say that I did get to get that experience shooting more stuff with neon lights. So for the next episode of Make Your Pick, our focus is going to be shooting pictures in black and white. Um, so now to submit your picture, it does, just uh, so you have a bit of a heads up, we're not necessarily purist here. If you have a picture that's black and white largely, but includes some color elements like uh, color popping, go for it. You know, we're going to be talking about it, um, but our focus is black and white. So how does black and white make your pictures any better? Does it make your pictures better? We're going to be talking about that sort of thing. Um, if you want to submit a picture for our black and white show, um, you can post it to Instagram. Tag our account, uh, at the photo chan with two N's, on Instagram, along with the hashtag MakeYourPickChallenge. This makes it easier for us to find your pictures, because if you just post a picture and we don't know where it is, you, of course your Instagram account has to be public for this to happen. Now, if you'd like to share a picture with us, but your Instagram account is private, uh, then you can also send us an image via DM. Um, just let us know that it's for our black and white show. If you're not a big fan of social media and you'd rather shoot us an email, that's fine too. Just send an email to officialphotochannel at gmail.com. I have a subject line as make your pick challenge and just make sure you actually attach your picture. So the deadline to submit your pictures for our black and white episode is December 31st, 2019. Yeah, so our second episode is going to be our first episode of the new year. That's not confusing at all.